What's going on YouTube? My name is Marcus aka Apostle and today I'm bringing you another spell break live commentary. This time we are gonna run the toxic class and we're gonna do a little how to win with toxic guide. Let's hit up some Westmar. If you guys do enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the Twitch stream down in the description below. We're gonna be doing lots more stuff like this on stream, so if you wanna be here live like these 500 people are right now, you can do that. You just gotta check it out. Toxic off drop is one of the best, if not the best gauntlet. So you can just land on people and not really have to worry about it. Because it's basically a shotgun. If someone lands on you, you just slap them real quick, and then they get stuck to the ground because of your puddles. And then you're in a good spot. Got a nice little fire. A little dragon fire build out of the gate. I'm just gonna loot up. Try to get my scrolls up. Try to get a belt, mainly. I'm pretty set for an early game fight right now, other than just a belt. I really need it because... Ooh, even better gauntlets. Because if someone else finds a bell early game and you run into them, they basically win. With Toxic, it's not as bad because Toxic has Corrosion, which is the the damage over time to someone's shield. So you can kind of keep distance and just spray your Toxic Gauntlet and slowly pick away. Most early game fights, you want shields and you want an amulet at least. A shield, a rune, and a second gauntlet is like your best friend out of the gate. Checking to see if I have Vanishing Mist, which I don't, so I can't move as much as I'd like to. Vanishing Mist, uh, if you guys don't know, is the second ability you unlock on Toxic. It makes you dash and turn invisible in your Toxic Cloud. And it's basically the main reason to play the Toxic class. If you want to be a really good Toxicologist, you need to get really good with your Vanishing Mists. Because that's going to up your mobility and give you the increased damage when you unlock Outbreak uh, for your level two, or your level three class ability. I don't really want to chase this guy down. I'm gonna let him come back to me. Seems like he's just gonna run. Pretend like I don't see him. Hide in the bush. Let him close the distance for me because I don't have a lot of stuff to close the distance right now. I have a spring step which is bad. But people are impatient, so they'll usually push you. You can really play corner as well with the Toxic Gauntlet. You can just wait for someone to walk around the corner and slap them right in the face. And do a bunch of damage. You guys getting DF left and right. Finish him off with a little fireball there. Because he was a little bit out of range to kill him with the Toxic Gauntlet there. Toxic, you really want to be like this close to the person if you're going to hit him. Otherwise, you should be trying to use your second gauntlet as much as possible. How far do we gotta go? We gotta go all the way across the map for zone. So what's gonna end up happening here is everybody's gonna end up fighting in this general area. Because everybody's running towards zone right now. It'd be really nice if I can get a better rune. I prefer dash with toxic because it allows you to close the distance. Like I said, you wanna be right in somebody's face when you're using the gauntlet. So dash is good to get up close and personal. Let's hope we can find some people. There's people out there. Looks like one of them's running Fortitude. You can tell because he's got that like blue shininess to him. Ooh, gold spring step. That's a tough choice. I think I'm gonna stick with dash for now. I just feel more comfortable with it. Gold spring step may be the better rune though. Invis guy. Hiding right there. Little dragon fire and he falls in the fracture. Oh, he got out. Not expecting that. I thought he was dead for sure. <laughs> you can really wrangle people into the fractures. If you just rotate around, if someone's backing up, you can rotate around in circles. And a lot of times, if you get their back to the fracture, they'll end up just falling right in. So I haven't talked about my build yet. We'll run into zone. We'll talk about that. I've got runic fluency. So I got double dash. It allows me to have more movement and close the distance really well. I have fervor for increased attack speed, which is basically just to get damage off as quickly as possible and then I have recovery which heals half of the health that you lose if you watch my health in the bottom left I'm like not losing any health to these ticks and that's because recovery is regenerating really fast so I've got 
the mobility from runic the damage from fervor and the tankiness from recovery so it's a nice little mix of a build here to get everything you really need you're not like full damage you're not full tank it's just a well-balanced play style you can really run this on any class I run it on pretty much every class except for Frostborn but now I've got my Vanishing Mist a little bit more movement I'm gonna touch this next zone before I go and fight these guys over here so I can get my outbreak I'm gonna pop my Vanishing Mist choke that go back into my cloud just to stay invisible if you've chased me I could have gotten some more damage off I don't really want to chase this guy down I'd rather third party this fight and let him come back to me. I think I can handle him later. So basically your goal with Toxic is just to land as many Outbreak shots as possible. Once you unlock Outbreak, you can do crazy amounts of damage. I heard this guy go come out of invis. Use my Vanishing Mist to close the distance. I'll slap from that far away with the Outbreak because I do increased damage with it. I really want to keep on this guy because he has low shield and I don't. I lost track of him. Or I have shield and he doesn't. He's invis right there in front of me somewhere. I'm gonna throw that down just to make it a little bit harder. With invis people, you really want to make them go into the air because it's easy to see with them in the sky. That's the easiest time you can see them. And it also forces them to levitate so you can hear them levitate. Which is really good. I'm not exactly sure where he went. I think he's down over there. I think I just saw him popping a potion. Or if this might be the same guy right here. There you go. Got him to blow that up. Hit him with a little outbreak slap. And really focus on dancing around him. With my dash. Sideways dashing in circles is a really good way to get someone's back. And prevent them from... Uh... From keeping track of you. I'm gonna throw these along the wall so I can use multiple vanishing mists to close distance. Cover a lot of ground that way, stay invisible for a super long amount of time. I haven't really had any crazy good fights because everybody's just so focused on running away right now and avoiding fighting. I see him in the air, I saw him recharge. That was a nice little hover above me. He played that well. Playing Pyro to try to just outclass me. Pyro will pretty much directly counter Tox because it prevents you from using your clouds as much as you'd like to. Everybody's running invis. Seems like. Pop him real quick. I need to hide. Stone just did too much damage there. If you run into a stone with no movement, you're just in a really bad spot all around. So now that I got out of there, I can go back and loot. There's also a lot of people running invis in solos lately. So I'm a little bit worried about getting snuck up on. There's a guy out that way. He's running Tempest. I'm gonna let him come to me, close the distance for me. Sometimes the best movement is no movement. Envis right over there. I can sort of see him. Went back up this way. I'm basically playing this entire game with my ears instead of my eyes because everybody's just running Envis right now. It's going to be a hard fight. I don't want to get too distracted because I'm going to end up landing on somebody. Instead of chasing, I'm just going to play passive, let him try to come to me. I really don't want to get Invis outbroken. I see Eat Drink Play TP is in this lobby. That's my friend. And he plays Invis Toxic, which hits really hard. But it's just not my playstyle. This might be him up here. I want to finish this guy off. We got 50 HP, so if I can. 
Finish him off quick, that'd be great. Before he, you know, flies. Gonna use my Vanishing Mist again to cover distance. If you can stagger your clouds like that, you can really cover the most distance possible. You almost always want to stagger your Toxic Clouds. One, to be able to cover more distance and be able to proc your Vanishing Mists as much as possible. And two, to spread them out so it doesn't create a giant wall of dragon fire and hurt yourself. So basically I'm just kind of watching this fight now. Letting it unfold. Let this guy use his Feather Fall so I don't have to deal with it. Um, yeah, there's Los hiding. Hiding with his Invis Toxic. This is really bad. He's going to chase it, me down because he knows it's me. I'm going to get focused really hard. And he's for sure not going to leave me alone. Notice I just lost literally all of my health. going to try to pop a potion. I think I'm safe, but I'm not positive. So it's going to continue to move away. I'm really worried about his invis toxic play because really the only thing he has on me with that is the surprise aspect like that what he just did and it's really really unfortunate because he can basically one shot me invis also gives you increased movement speed so it's hard for me to out maneuver him I'm basically just trying to trying to make sure he loses where I am. He's the only one I'm really worried about right now. So I just need to keep moving, keep getting pots off when I can, so that way he can't just one-shot me with his Invis Toxic. Luckily I'm running Flame, so I can kind of counter him a little bit. Oh, a couple whiffs. Don't have a good build for fighting people in the air. It's really hard to hit people in the air with fireballs, and especially hard to hit them with toxic. Um, I hear him. Let's see if I can get a vanishing mist off. No, he went immune. Okay, doing all right. Got Los on me again. I'm gonna pop this off. Oh no, I'm getting focused hard. If I don't get snuck up on here, I should be okay. I really need to get these potions off. I want to be in a better spot. Let them fight each other. Luckily, that guy fell on my head and didn't know I was there. Now, what I did there was... Ouch. Was I threw down my toxic clouds and then threw down my wall. Los is being super obnoxious with his invis. He's got two charges of it, so he can basically stay invis forever. I actually don't know which skin is him. I think he's the bug skin right there. Yeah, got him. So I'm basically just trying to avoid damage this whole time because I know he's running Invis Toxic. I'm trying to just stay hidden. This is really bad. Being a Toxic player gets a Pyro final zone in an open field is incredibly difficult. I whiffed my outbreak there. I need to be really careful one shot but hopefully my recovery will help me get up some more health throw this down then with the DF a little bit we're both one shot he's got recovery actually too so he's in a much better spot than I am he's a terrible terrible zone for me I'm probably not going to make it through this because as soon as I touch the ground he gets free damage Yeah, I couldn't really do anything there. It was a really, really bad spot.
I think that was a pretty good game though. But basically, if he if he wasn't running pyro and he didn't get that exact zone, he would have been dead there. I would have been able to play my vanishing mists, but because there was no what you want to do is you want to throw your clouds up on walls so that way they can't dragon fire it like he just did. So every time he shoots, he's making puddles all over the place. And when I go to throw down my toxic cloud, it destroys it really, really quickly. And it's just bad. So I think we got to do a second game. I'm actually going to get a dub this time. It looks like we're kind of alone at Bogmore. Just that guy. I kind of want to try to land on him, but not really. He's going all the way out to the edge of Bogmore. And there's another guy right there. I'm going to try to secure this and then grab these epic chests below me. It's almost always a bad idea to land straight on the epic chests because if somebody lands up there or just anywhere on the high ground, you're kind of trapped here unless you get something really good, which I didn't really get here. So let's play this out and actually get the dub this time. Hopefully the final zone doesn't just screw me over like it did last game. I think if I would have hit one of those vanishing mists or one of those outbreak shots, I would have been in a much better position. I've got a guy pushing me here. This time we'll actually play with the frost gauntlet, which is my preferred play style. As I whiff an easy shot. Kind of stuttering a little bit, but that's all right. Get the pyro player out of the game early. Not that he's the only one, but it's good not to have pyro players in the end zone as a toxic. Like I was saying at the end of that first game, you want to throw your clouds on the wall when you vanishing miss. So if there's fire, let me show you. So if somebody misses a fireball, right? It creates this puddle. If you throw your toxic cloud down, like anywhere near that, it's going to turn it into dragon fire. That was a little bit on the edge of it, but any puddle near it. So basically what you want to do with your toxic clouds is... Oh, there's a guy here. Hang on. Okay. What you want to do with your toxic clouds is throw them up on walls like that, and then you can like dash up into them. I don't have my vanishing mist, but that's going to prevent the toxic puddles from, or the fire puddles from turning your toxic clouds into vanishing mists as much as possible. You have to run like halfway across the map again, so that's great. I could really use a better frost. Looks like we might actually catch some people on the way in. I think I saw someone up on this hill. And then there's this guy in front of me, and I hear lightning out there. So there's quite a few people that are going to be in this zone. I'm kind of hoping to catch them before we get in. Because it gets really hectic. And a big thing with Toxic is being able to just manage getting off your Toxic Clouds without them turning into dragon fire. So these end zones here that are kind of in the corner are not great for toxic players because it just it turns into immediate madness as soon as you enter into it keeping an eye out i lost the guy that was in front of me but i like to pick off as many people as i can before we get into these closer ranges luckily the circle isn't completely stuffed in the corner like the last one was so it'll be a little bit less hectic but it'll still be pretty hectic it's an it's a min uh like it's still got the middle of the map involved so a lot of people are going to end up here. I'm pretty sure I just saw an invis guy there. With frost and toxic, you can really manage your, your range well. So see how I'm just kind of, I'm not being too aggressive. I see one invis down there. He's got stone, so I definitely don't want to be on the ground with him, or else he's just going to get a thousand damage off for free. Probably just popped the invis. He walked into my puddle, which is a bad life for him. I'm just going to chase hard. I can afford to tank a couple shots. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm getting chased. This guy's greedy, going for the loot. chase me down you would have had more loot instead you're gonna die this guy out that way too I'm gonna shoot to try to pull him in 
Just because the more people I have around, the less I'm going to get focused and I can do do my own thing. I can manage the chaos a little bit better than the average player. So see how I'm just dancing around in circles with this guy? I want to make sure he's constantly having to go like this because that's going to make him lose where I'm at. It's going to allow me to just get off easier shots because if they don't know where you're at, then they can't dodge. There's a guy right there pushing in. So basically the goal, especially with close range builds like this, like a toxic build is to make them lose track of you. I threw down that frost to block his incoming fireballs. Give me a little bit of time. Won't let him chase me. Let him do the moving and I can just keep track of him. I kind of lost him. <laughs> I'll do this so it's easier to keep track of him and then immediately lose track of him. Okay, bye to that guy. He actually hit my toxic with a wind shear and it put a little toxic cloud on the wall and that's what he just jumped into and died to. If there's a toxic cloud down and you have wind, you can actually throw the wind shears through it and it'll carry the toxic and it'll hit the person with the wind and with the toxic for a little bit of added damage. I don't have good recovery stacks, which kind of sucks. Having max recovery is really, really strong. I also don't have a good ice, but... I said I was going to play ice this game, so I'll keep it ice so that there's a little variety in the video and variety in the stream. Shout out to you guys in chat. The zone's getting really small really quick. It's going to start ticking for four. Thought I just saw somebody right there. Maybe not. What's actually kind of nice about being in zone for solos is that the invis players lose their invis when they get hit. I'm going to trade out for a small health pot because it's easier to pop in combat. Having all big shields is nice, or big potions is nice when you're running thirsty, but since I'm running recovery, it's really, really hard to get off a five second long heal while in combat. It's a lot quieter than I thought it was going to be. There's still eight other people left. And the zone's really small. Here we go. I got a guy coming in. So now I have outbreak, so I can use my vanishing mist more effectively hit him with outbreak there for plus 75 percent damage so not quite double but pretty close to double i'm just gonna close the distance on him he's doing a good job of keeping me away so when he feather falls this ice is gonna really come in handy he had recovery which made it really hard to kill him if somebody has recovery it's really hard to kill them with with little damage, you really have to burst them down. So I had to get off that full toxic slap to finish him. I don't think I've hit one eye shot yet. That's okay. It's gonna come in handy in the later zones. When it gets really, really small, I may trade it out for a fire if I see one. But as of right now, it's still useful. I do wanna find a better one than green. Also more recovery scrolls are always good. Down to four people. It's gonna be a lot less hectic than last time. Plus we have this entire area to play around, um, which is gonna allow me to keep my toxic clouds up on things. There's a lot of different levels here. I can almost guarantee there's people hiding in here, but I wanna third party this. Kill hungry, so I'm gonna push this guy hard. And immediately turn on this guy. Running Tempest, which is where my Frost Gauntlet's gonna come in. This is a much better build against people in the air. I've got a Frost user behind me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push away from the Frost user and pinch the Tempest guy. Cause I was pinched there, so all I did was run right at the person in front of me and switch spots with them. So now they're pinched and they have to worry about me and the other guy. And I only have to worry about one of them really. 
Still don't really want to be in the middle of the fight as an ice user. Still another ice guy there. See, that's exactly what I want to happen. What I just did to that guy. I'm going to try to focus this guy down. Because he's running ice. He's staying hidden. He has a lot of potential to do a lot of damage to me. Uh, if I don't pay attention to him. Try to stay invisible quite a bit. The longer you can stay invisible is toxic, the better you are. The reason I don't run invis is just because I feel like mobility has a higher skill cap. I really don't want to be on this low ground with this guy. I'll let them finish him off. Gonna kind of disengage, pot up. I know there's that other sniper around here, which can do a lot of damage to me if I'm not careful. It can end my game quickly. There he is. See, he's doing a good job of staying out of the fight as well. Making sure he's not the focus. Finishing missed into outbreak. Just stay on top of him. Don't really let him get away. I'm gonna pop invis as soon as he comes out of this. So I don't want that to happen. I'm gonna pop the shield. I lost track of the other guy. There's only one more guy. Not sure exactly where he's at. Probably up in the hills. I have no shields. He's the Tempest guy. I'm going to try to just use this to... Since I have no shields, I want to get him down to my level. Make him push me for the easier shot. I don't want him to get above me. Is my main thing. I do want to fight him back here though. Because he does have stone. I'm more worried about his stone gauntlet than his wind gauntlet at this point. It's bad if he gets on top of me with wind. But that's more manageable. Just trying to keep my distance. Take some pop shots. And finish him off. So a lot of playing Frost and Toxic is just maintaining that distance. And just playing to the strengths of each gauntlet. You don't want to be mid-range. If you notice, I tried to either close the distance and be right on top of somebody or be really far away. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Twitch stream. We got 750 people chilling today. It's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, we have a lot of fun in here. Thanks for watching.